On behalf of everyone at the publishing house, I'd like to thank you all for joining us this evening to launch uh, one of our kind of, I guess, flagship sort of history titles for the, the coming season. At GNM, we we take our, our history list very very seriously. Um, for you know over 40 years now, it's been a real sort of core of, I guess, our identity and who we are as publishers. And as a result, it's an area in which we tend to commission very carefully, um, doing our best to privilege kind of quality and, and talent. Um, more than any other sort of single criterion, however, we're always on the lookout for authors who can bring to their who can bring that subject to life, um, whether it's an individual or a particular, you know, social milieu, or in the, the case of Redmond, uh, both. Um, and when I first read, you know, what was going to become Redmond, it was a, it was a form of kind of three or four chapters a little over a year ago, um, I was left in, like, straight away, within a couple of pages, in absolutely no doubt that Chris was one of those kind of elusive authors. Um, and absolutely nothing I've read or seen in the last year has done anything to kind of you know persuade me otherwise. Um, he's an extraordinary talent, and I think if everybody kind of gives the, gives this book a little bit of time, you'll realise it's it is a, an absolutely extraordinary book. What Chris has done, he has identified uh, faultlessly, I would say, at various critical points, significant details that illuminate his narrative. And that is part of the journalist's gift, and I think it's also part of the gift of the good historian. You see, all the questions rehearsed about Ireland, they're being rehearsed now in Westminster about everything else. Should we give self-government to Wales? Should we give it to Scotland? Should we give it to Lancaster? Should we Lan Lancaster? Lancaster? Should we give it to any other of the big, big British counties? There, and also, behind all of this, in all the negotiations that take place between Redmond and the British political leaders, one of the big issues is maybe the best way to get sorted of this Irish problem is to have a referendum about it. In the you know shades of Cameron and Europe, you know, the history seems really to come round at great speed and much quicker than many of us think. My, my book is an attempt to tell a story about a political campaign that kind of went on from 1910 to 1918. It's not, as John said, a, a, a typical history book. There's, there's no, there are no judgments, at least overtly expressed. There's no preaching in it. I'm not trying to tell anybody what they should think about John Redmond or they should think about the 1916 leaders or whatever. But I do think that um, uh, there'll be a lot of talk over the next year or so maybe about sacrifice, and rightly so, about the sacrifices people made and. and in, in pursuit of you know the independence of this country, but John Redmond certainly made a huge sacrifice, maybe of a different kind. Um, he gave almost 40 years of his life in pursuit of one goal, which was in a, a, a measure of independence for Ireland. He came within a hair's breadth of succeeding. He did really succeed, but he was thwarted by the First World War. And um, I think in all of the conversations we're having over the next year or so, I think his contribution is something that needs to be acknowledged and should be acknowledged. And I think that can be done without taking a position for or against anybody in the, in the, in the whole debate.